Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just have a question to ask you. Has anybody ever had a bad day? <laughs> well, I just praise God this morning that you're here and we welcome you to the Odyssey Church. And I think everybody knows who I am. But if you don't, I'm Rob. And uh, I pray this morning that you have come here to hear God's word, that you have come here to let the music stir your heart. And uh, we want you to know, even if you had a bad day or you had a couple of days, or maybe like some of us, we've had a lot of bad days in a row, that maybe that's why you're here today. Yeah. Because we are talking about how to live life and how to live it more abundantly. So we thank you for coming this morning, and we think it's, that it's okay not to be okay. Because if that were true, I couldn't be here because there's a lot of days for those that know me that I'm not okay. <laughs> And we think it's okay that if you come in here and you get a little excited, that you can smile and you can enjoy the Lord and enjoy the company of, the, of God's children. We're going to be together for 75 or 80 minutes. We might as well have a good time while we're here, right? Amen. So, we want you to know something. That, that, that no matter where you're at, no matter whether you're just starting to seek out who Jesus is, no matter whether you've been walking Him a long time, or maybe you just knew that you've just taken the first step that we are glad that you're here and we want to help you. We don't care where you've been. We don't even really care where you are right now. We're more concerned about where you're headed. We're more concerned about what God's going to do in your life. So we welcome you as you are and we pray that God helps us to lead you to where he wants you to be. Now, if you're here, and I think most people have it, if you never filled out one of those green connection cards, we would ask you to do that at this time, please. And, and put your name, your email address, your physical address, your phone number on there. And we ask you to do this so that we can get to know you a little better and so that you can get to know us a little better. We're not going to give you a whole bunch of emails or snail mails or any of that kind of stuff. But we are looking forward to what God is going to do in our lives today. So I want us to tell you right up front what you can expect today. Today our message is still in our series called The Abundant Life. And today we're going to be talking specifically about the direction our life should go into. But before we do that, we are going to sing a couple of songs. We're going to take care of some church business like our tithes and offerings. And uh, no matter whether you had a bad day or whether you haven't, we want you to stand and sing with us and enjoy your time here. I'm going to tell you the secret, the secret to a successful church service at the Odyssey Church. The secret is 100% crowd participation. So if you're here today, will you stand with me and let's sing a couple songs. And the best way to uh, get to know somebody is to introduce yourself, tell them your name, ask them for their name, and tell them. I can see clearly now. God wants to do a new thing in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I missed my partner, Bryce. Can't wait till he gets back. But I hear he's doing a little surprise appearance. My name is Rob, or Tor. The other Rob. If you ever have an idea for a song or you want to comment about a song that you hear here, you can see me or you can see Bryce. Uh, we put a put a jar by the refreshments if you want to write anything down about our music here at the Odyssey. Uh, Pastor Rob has been talking about the abundant life and it got me thinking about all the things that God gives us in abundance. We don't really even think about it. So this next song is to help us remind about what he does give us. If you can stay and feel free, it seems like most people are. <clears throat> if not, that's okay. But I ask everyone to start to clap with this one. Let the music move you as you rejoice and give your praise and glory to God. The sunglasses that you got, if you don't mind. Everybody's going to put these on. <laughs> Everybody smile. I love it when you're in the big crowd. <laughs> Anything different? You can be seated. I'm sorry. 
um, to the altars. And if you look down our hall and you look in our back classroom, and if you look up on the bookcase, we have a couple new members of our congregation. They actually are staff. They work for free, so they fit right in with the rest of us. Um, Rob and Tara, Tor and the project manager, built our altars for us this week. They came in on Friday and Saturday. They've got great plans for the children's room. We have a hermit crab that belongs to the congregation now. He's in his bat cave. His name is Bruce Wayne. And I, 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 mean, I have witnesses. Friday night we were here. Darkness fell. He went to climb into the shell that had the bat suit on it. I'm not even kidding. I wish I'd taken a picture. So we figured Bruce Wayne's a good name for him. And then also in the children's classroom, there's a couple of fish. And there's one fish. There's going to be more. <laughs> Um, and the kids are going to get to name them. So as we kind of kick off the spring and head into the summer, we're going to be getting doing a lot more with our children's and our youth ministry, our team ministry. You're going to hear about more about that in the next couple weeks. So we just want to thank them because they put in a lot of their time and their effort. And then also we are we didn't scare her off. I didn't scare her off. Trish is back there on tech again. She's learning the computer. And I always, I went to a conference one time with a whole bunch of people that all they do is worship and technology in churches. That's, that's all they do is, is technology in churches. And the best piece of advice I heard was it doesn't matter if you're skilled. You don't have to have the skill. You just have to have the want and the willingness to learn. So if there is something here at the Odyssey Church you want to learn how to do, we are still seeking volunteers. And come see Pastor Rob or myself, and we will get you, we will definitely put you to work, as Rob and Tara and Trisha found out, and even Bruce Wayne, because he was helping me make copies on Friday night. So, all right, but we're going to move to our tithes and offerings. And I love that we sang the song, Pass It On, before we do, because that's what we do with our offerings here at the Odyssey Church, is we pass it on. We pass it on to our community, which we've talked about. We pass it on to help with the church, which you've all seen. Um... And this week I came across this verse, Matthew 25, cha Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 to 40 states, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you <laughs> visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you in sick or in prison and visit? You did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters. You were doing it to me. When I say king, I mean God. And last week, I talked about how God sees at everything that we do. And that includes our giving. And I know how it is to struggle. I know how it is to struggle financially. My family lives paycheck to paycheck, and then sometimes that isn't even enough. However, I can tell you, since I started faithfully giving, not just my time and my talent, but my money, God has rewarded me in ways that I can't even imagine. I have found money in my wallet I didn't know was there. I've had checks show up in the mail from family and friends. Bills that I expected to arrive never came. Time and time again, God has met my needs faithfully, and he has always taken care of me, and I've never gone without what I really needed. And for me personally, that is why I continue to tithe, because he tells us to tithe. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in our next sermon series starting in June, How to Be Rich. It's all about money. But the reason we do it, we ask that you tithe, is because God rewards us not only in heaven, in our eternal life, but in our daily life, and I am living proof of that. He has never once let me down. So as hard as it is sometimes to, to give up my, my tithe and my offering, I still do it because I know that God is rewarding me and he is taking care of me and I am wrapped in his love. It is so. So would you pray with me? Father God, we come to you today. You know what's in our hearts. And you know what our wants are, and you know what our needs are. And we know that you have promised to take care of us, and we know that you want us to take care of others. We ask that you take our offerings, 
small or large, and that you multiply them, that you make them grow, and that they become limitless in your hands. Be with us today as we continue our service. Be with Pastor Rob as he delivers your message and your words. And may we all leave here today going just a little bit closer to you. And Father, we ask it every week and every week I'm going to say it again. If there's someone here today who has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, may today be the day. In your precious Son's holy name, in Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Hello everyone, Bryce here, coming to you live from the announcements video message, and unfortunately I could not be here today. So I'm just here to, you know, give you your weekly Bryce time this week. So what do we got going on at the Odyssey Church? Right now we are currently in the Abundant Life Sermon Series, you know, being run by our faithful and trustworthy PR. Of course, you know, we, are, we already have been, you know, you know, two weeks into this, so if you want to check out the previous two messages that we've already had recorded on the Odyssey Church, just head there under the Sermon Series tag and just check out our YouTube videos we already have up there for you to check out. Other than that, we got some announcements coming up, you know, right down the road. On May the 10th, we'll be having a special Sunday for the hardest job in the world. That's being a mom. Of course, you know, I don't know if I could even do it. In fact, I literally can't do it. So, you know, just, you know, show your mom some appreciation on that special day. And, of course, invite them out to the Odyssey Church on Sunday. And, of course, afterwards, take them out to lunch. Show your mom some love and appreciate the hardest job in the world, if I can only comprehend. Then on May the 24th, we will be celebrating Pentecost. And that's the day when the Holy Spirit came down onto the earth and appeared to 3,000 people. And of course, we here at the Odyssey Church, we will be marking that day by welcoming Tom Slaughter and the Second Wind Ministries for a special combined service at 10 o'clock. So we will be providing the hot dogs for the uh, barbecue afterwards for, to celebrate Memorial Day. Hot dogs and hamburgers, and of course, you know, we, we ask you guys to please bring a side dish or dessert for the uh, May 24th barbecue after the Pentecost service the same day. Then on May 31st, we'll be having another special service at 10 o'clock. And as we turn the stage over to the teens, we will be having a bunch of local teens from local churches coming out to kick off our new teen youth group that we have been talking about planning for a good while now. We will be having that on May the 31st, so please come out and, of course, you know, wake up your teenagers, bring them out to church, especially me. So, um, finally, after that, we will be having our How to Be Rich sermon series on June the 7th, because who won't want to be rich? Hey, I can use some money. So, um, so we'll be having that on June the 7th. So, other than that, I'm going to be heading out of here and let Pastor Rob take it over from here. PR, you are on, and don't blow it. <laughs> No pressure, no pressure. All right, that's our buddy Bryce who couldn't be with us. And uh, as you said, we do have some exciting things coming up in the church. Uh, first of all, I just want to take the time to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. It, it's just really great to see you and I appreciate you. And uh, we, we do have some exciting things coming up. We've been in this series, if you haven't been here, we've been in a series called The Abundant Life. And so often we mix up uh, abundant life with abundance there's a difference you can have a lot of abundance and not live life and live it more abundantly so we want to teach you how to live that abundant life before we go into a sermon that tells you how to be rich so it's not about money i want you to know that it is about money but it's not about money it's not about money for the church it's never about money for the plate it's always about the pew because we know if we take care of the pew god will take care of the plate and we don't want anything from you, we want something for you. And that's the whole context of that next sermon series coming in. But if you follow the principles that we teach in that series, you will be able to be wealthy financially as well. That's something that took me a long time to learn. I had a lot of failure. And it's actually based on a series uh, that I heard years ago and it still impacts me today. And it's what's been allowed to... It's, it, that series affected me so much, it's allowed me to go almost two years without a salary as we get this church up and running. So I praise God for that. And 
We do have a new uh, elementary school ministry, so if you know people with children, we have a place for them in the back. You know, we would encourage you to go back and take a look at that. And we have a new teen ministry that's starting up. We we have new volunteers now, and I appreciate them so much, and they're stepping up to the plate to help in so many different areas. And as I look around, you know, this church is pretty amazing because almost everybody here does something. You know, some uh, uh, Yvonne used to bring us the best wings. Oh my goodness, we had Friday night football and she would bring these wings and the only reason we had Friday night football was to get her wings. So, <laughs> everybody does something, we just, we're just so appreciated. But uh, we have excited, uh, if you've never heard Tom Slaughter before, we used to call him Kenny Rogers. His wife is a 9-11 survivor, I don't know whether she's going to be speaking that day or not, but she was there when the planes hit the towers and uh, it, she has an amazing testimony. Uh, we are bringing in one of the, the, the best uh, youth groups in this area to show us how it's done and how it's done right. And uh, they're going to be a uh, partner with us on May the 31st. A lot of great things coming up here. And uh, right now we're just in the middle of this sermon series or this message series called The Abundant Life. And the idea of this series is really to help us live the lives that we desire to live. The idea of this series is that we all know no matter how happy we are, no matter how unhappy we are, uh, no matter what's going on in life, there's some good areas, but the, you most of us have some kind of bad areas that are going to. At least some areas that, that we thought would, you know, could be a little bit better or a little bit easier in our lives. Uh, you know, I, sometimes I think to myself, you know, what is it that you don't hear? One of the things I've never had anybody come up to me and tell me, and there could be some people out there who do, and I've just never met her, but I've never had anybody come up to me and said, my desire, I aspire to live life worse than I'm living it right now. I don't like it. My life is too good. I, I have never met one person come to me and tell me that my marriage is too great. My husband is such a fantastic person, I just wish he would mess up sometimes. I, 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 I and I know you're all thinking of somebody right now, okay? I know that. You know, I, for those of us that have kids, I, you know, I, I've never met one person say, you know, my kids are so great. I hear these stories about these other kids. I just wish my kid would mess up sometimes. He's just too good. I've never had anybody tell me. You know, my, I went to the doctor the other day. My doctor told me my health was so great that I will live forever. And I don't want to live forever. I, I just wish I would get some kind of dreaded disease. I've never met anybody that says, you know, I am tired of paying my bills in advance. I am tired of having so much money left over. I just wish I didn't have so much money in the bank. I've never met anybody that said, my prayer life is so good, my walk with Jesus is so good, that I'm thinking about writing the new and improved New Testament. It just doesn't happen. Most of us probably have areas in our life that are, are okay, that, are, that we're living abundantly. But I think most of us also have areas in our lives that we wish or just a little bit better. And here's the strange part. We live in the United States of America, which is the most abundant country in the world. The United States has an abundance of resources. We have an abundance in our society, but I think we all know most Americans, not just some Americans, but most Americans never live life and live it abundantly. I've heard it said that everybody dies, but not everybody lives. And we know in our heart of hearts that's true. We, we know everybody dies, but not everybody lives life, and most people never live life and live it more abundantly. They don't live the life that God designed for them to have. And that's where we get the name from our series. We get it from a section of scripture that was written by one of Jesus' best friends when he was here on earth, a man by the name of John. It's the story of God's life, or Jesus' life here on earth, as witnessed by one of his friends. We call it the Gospel of John. And in chapter 10 of the, the Gospel of John, verse 10, John records the words of Jesus, and he says, The thief does not come except to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus goes on. I'm glad he doesn't leave it there. He goes on to say, I have come so that they may have life, and they may have it more abundantly. So the question we've sort of been asking for the last couple of weeks is, if Jesus came so we could live life and live it more abundantly, why aren't more of us living the abundant life? Why don't more of us have this life that Jesus came to give us? And here at the Odyssey, uh, you know, I just want you to know, and it's just absolute fact, that we love you. You know, some of you I barely know, but I care a lot about you. In fact, there's things that I, that I talk to people about that keep me up at night, the burden so heavy for what's going on in their life, and I know they're not living the life that God has designed them to live. 
So we want you to be able to live that life. So we, we're doing this sermon series, and we're glad you joined us this morning so that just maybe uh, you can live the life that God designed you to live. Now, if you haven't been here, if this is the first time here, I'm going to sort of catch you up as to where we're at. I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that, but I'll spend a few minutes. And, and for those of us who are here, it's just a, a way of refreshing ourselves. Uh, the first step to having the abundant life, I just sort of skipped over. I, I just assumed everybody knew it. And, and to be honest with you, that was a big mistake on my part. Uh, I was reminded again this week that not everybody knows what we think they know. So, so the first step is simply this. The first step to having the abundant life is you have to make up your mind that you want the abundant life. And I believe the biggest obstacle to the life that God created us to have is right between our ears. I think the biggest obstacle of not having the abundant life is in our minds. The real battle is in our minds. You don't have to continue living in despair. You don't have to keep living in depression and anxiety and anger and bitterness and resentment. You don't have to live that way. You can decide to have the more abundant life right here, right now, before you leave this morning. See, sometimes the biggest part of finishing is simply getting started. The problem is most people never move beyond where they're at right now simply because they've never made their mind up to move from where they're at right now. They never made their mind up that they want this abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Most people just never decide they want more out of life. They're complacent. They like where they're at. Even if it's a bad place, at least they know what it is, so they never make a change. And since they don't, they just sort of wander aimlessly through life. When you make up your mind, you want this new thing, this thing that God wants to give you, you're going to begin to have the more abundant life. But nothing is going to change until you decide you want it to change. If you just keep wishing for it and hoping for it, if you just want some miraculous thing just to happen in your life, then you're never going to live life and live it more abundantly because, because God has predestined for this life. He has designed it for you. But you have to decide that you want it. In other, in other words, we not only need to hear God's Word, we need to take God's Word and apply it to our lives. We have to make up our mind to allow ourselves to get into a position where God can help us. And I know it's not always easy. I know that. But truthfully, I care way too much about you not to tell you the truth. The only person that can do anything about your current problems is you. So that's why I think some of us need to pay attention to the Word of God and then take the Word of God and apply it to your life. The Scripture tells us that this Word is inspired by God Himself. Now, that word inspired means God breathed. God breathed it. God used man's personality. God used man's experience. But through what we call the Holy Spirit, I know some of this may seem strange to you, but, but we believe it to be true that, that God took the Holy Spirit and inspired that person to write it using their own life experiences and their own personality that God gave them. And he tells us that, that his word is great for training us in a way to live his ways, to correct our mistakes, to expose our rebellion or our sin, for showing us the truth. It's useful for living our lives and living more abundantly. So that's why you need to read the Bible for yourself. Not just come to church and hear it, but take it home and read it for yourself. You need to meditate upon it. That means just think about it. Think about it over and over and how you can apply it to your life and what changes it'll do if, if this happens, if you start doing what it says. And I promise you, if you do that, you will begin to live life more abundantly. Now here's the strange part about it. You will live life more abundantly whether you believe in Jesus or not. His word is practical for your life whether you believe Jesus is who he says he is or not. But the good part is, once you accept Christ, the Bible tells us we get his Holy Spirit, so he gives us the power to live it. Everybody wishes for the more abundant life, but not everybody gets it. Everybody wishes for the abundant life, but most people never find it. Jesus says that there's a strong road, and there's this narrow road. And he said the broad road is an easy road. And because it's the easy road, most people take it. But he warns us. He said that easy road, that broad road, leads to death and destruction and disaster. But he says there's a narrow road. And that narrow road, it's a hard road to travel sometimes. 
Because if it's not too difficult, you can't do it. It just takes a little bit of effort. But because it takes effort, most people don't choose it. But that is the road. The narrow road is the one that leads to life. And not just life. He says it leads to life and prosperity. It leads to blessings. But really, that's where the problem lies. It is most people say, well, it's hard. So I just think I'll take that broad road. You know, I, I, I think even the people that originally decide that maybe they'll walk that narrow road, they give up when, when it doesn't happen overnight. Most people choose it because in order to, to go down that narrow, you've got to do some things differently. And nobody likes change. We've got some bad habits that we need to get rid of. We've got some areas in our life we need to be more disciplined in. We've got some things, some areas in our life that we just have to do some things differently. We need to apply God's Word. We need to know God's Word in order for us to have the more abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Now, you can think about it this way. How hard is it to go home and decide, I want to have a weed garden? I mean, it's pretty easy to have a weed garden, right? You don't have to do anything. My wife, she loves yard work. See, our, our, our yard sometimes, uh, I, I wonder in question where she gets all the money for the stuff she gets. But she works in it every day. Because if she wants that yard to look the way she does, she has to go out every day and fertilize and water the flowers that she wants, and she has to pull out the weeds that she doesn't want. Well, our thoughts are the same way. You know, our thoughts determine our actions, and it's easy to keep in the same old thoughts that we've had for years. It's easy to keep on doing the same old things that we've done for most of our life. But if we want to get more out of life, we've got to get rid of some of the weeds, and we have to do it every day. You can't just do it one time and hope it goes away. You can't expect to just go home and live life and live it more abundantly if you don't make any changes. Joyce Meyer says you need to get rid of your wishbone and get some backbone. It takes work and discipline to live the more abundant life. And we all know this. In our minds, we know it, but it takes a while to get it from our minds to our heart. We all know we need to make up our minds to live the life that we desire to live. But, but really, I think one of the problems we have is we have this tension between here and now. We have this tension about living in the moment, satisfying our desires, satisfying uh, uh, our instant gratification. And we all know what we should do. But when we do what we should do, what we're actually doing is we're living in the future, and it's easier to live in the present than it is to live in the future. And we all know this, or at least we should know it, because we've all experienced it. When we pursue instant gratification, the problems in our lives will always increase. When we pursue instant gratification, our problems will always get worse. It takes work. It takes discipline. You know, if you go out and you eat one Big Mac, it's not going to destroy your health. But at the same point in time, if you go out and have one salad, it's not going to make you healthy either. <laughs> See, Satan loves it when we live in the moment. Satan loves it when we put our future on our side. Our finances, they just sort of blow up and they're destroyed because we buy things before we can afford them. Our relationships are damaged, and sometimes they're even killed because we don't put in the time to build the solid foundations and trust and respect. Our health suffers. It's stolen from us because we don't take the time to eat properly and exercise properly and get enough rest. And the reason I know this is because I'm a living example of how to do it wrong. I mean, but I'm telling you, right now, I, I've sort of decided, I've made my mind up, I'm going to purposely and intentionally to go out and try to live life and live it more abundantly. In other words, I'm going to make my mind up to put aside some of my instant gratification for a better reward later. Jesus came so we could live life and we could live it more abundantly. And Jesus wants us and he loves us and God has designed this life for us. But we have to make up our minds that we want it. And if we don't, we can't have it. We have to decide to quit living for the moment and see how things could be and should be. And then put the direction of our life to go towards the things that we desire. To put it another way, we have to position ourselves so that God can do a new thing in our life. We have to make up our minds to travel the narrow road, the hard road, the road of work and discipline. And when we make up our mind, then we have to put our past 
in the past. We can never change our past, but we can change our future. We can't change what happened to us yesterday, but we can change what's going to happen to us tomorrow. No matter what happened in the past, it is the past. It is over and it's done with. Don't dwell on it anymore. Take out the trash in your life. And if you don't know how to do that, go back to our, our website or go to youtube.com and type in the Odyssey Church and watch the first message in our series. It was called Take Out the Trash. Put the past behind you. But after you've made your mind up that you're not going to dwell on these things in the past, after you've made your mind up that you're going to live this life Jesus came to live in, and you're committed to the life that God has designed for you, you put the past in the past, the things would have kept you from having the life that you've always dreamed of. You're going to put it behind you and move on. Then you have to know what your purpose is. And that was last week's message. It's the eight-year-old question. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Why did God create me? The second step is we have to know our purpose. And what we need to know is our purpose is for God and for His glory and for His purposes. If you're just working for your own purposes and for your own glory, then we can become successful. I know a lot of people that are successful, they're working for their self, they're working for their glory, they're working for their own bank account, but I've never met a person that was doing those things. In fact, some of the most miserable people that I know are people that do that because they're never satisfied. They're doing these things for their self, but they don't know what their true purpose in life is. See, God didn't create us so that we could use him for our own purposes and for our own glory. And we get it wrong so often of the time. And some of that is, is, is the way we've been taught. You know, we, we, we ask God if we can use him for our purposes. God, will you fix my marriage because I don't like living this way. God, will you, will you let me make this deal because it's a lot of money and I can use it. God, you know, can you fix some of my problems because I don't like it. And it's okay to pray for things. I, I'm not telling you the Bible, the scripture tells it. Come to God with thanksgiving and put our requests before Him. It's okay to pray for those things, but you've got to understand why you're praying for it. It's not for our benefit, it's for His glory. When God fixes your finances, you're to give Him glory for that. When God fixes your marriage, you're to give Him glory for that. And His purpose is fulfilled when other people see that that's taking place, and they too get encouraged to follow this God to help you. Mm -hmm. We have to know that God created us for His purposes and His glory. We were reminded last week that a creator never creates anything for the creation's benefit. You know, if I'm going to invent something new, I don't invent it for the invention's purpose. I don't invent it for, 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 so that it can be happy. I in, it makes something new. I create something new either for my purposes or for somebody that loves purposes. The creation is always for something other than the creation. And when you... Understand that. I mean, it's really simple when you think about it, but, but most of us never think about it. When you really think about it, it becomes simple when you understand it, and then you make your mind up to get this new thing, this new light that God has decided to do in you and through you. It is easier to put your past behind you because you know it's not about you, it's about Him. It is easier to put your past behind you when you realize the purpose that you were created for. It is easy to start going in the direction that you should go in. But you know, just putting your past behind you and, and just forgetting and knowing, uh, forgetting about the things that have happened to you and knowing your purpose, uh, it puts you on your way to living a more abundant life, but it's truly only the starting point. You're only at the starting line at that point in time. Now, if you weren't here last week, uh, at the end of last week, I, I challenged everybody to go home and do some homework. And, uh, I ask them to think about what God has created them specific for. We know our purpose is to glorify Him, but how did He take His unique talent, your unique personality, and fulfill God's purpose for your life? How do you glorify Him with the things that He created you for individually? And I, then I said, if you'll bring them back, I'm not going to embarrass you, but I'll, uh, if you're brave, you can bring them into me, and I'll share them with the people that are here today to sort of encourage them. And we actually had a couple great people. I was surprised. Amen. So one of, I'm going to read to you a, a couple of the things that were written. Uh, one, purpose, one person wrote, My purpose is to grow, go, and lead others to God, wherever that may take me, or however odd it may seem. Now that's a great purpose. 
My purpose is to grow in the Lord and then go out, because Jesus never told us to stay in. He always told us to go out. And that we're to lead others to God as well, wherever that may take us. And if you've been following God for any length of time, you know you want to end up in some odd places. And that doesn't mean that you end up in China. I have been in some odd places right here in Selbyville. <laughs> so, so I mean. uh, another person wrote, my purpose is to glorify God and to spread his word through my life experiences, through the mistakes I've made, and through the triumphs I've celebrated, and through the gifts that he's given me. Now, I'm believing that if they really went home and prayed and, and, and listened to God to hear me, that's what God told them. If, that, if that's all true, and I believe it is, then these are people that are on their way to living life and living more abundantly. Now, the cool part for me is I know who they are, and I get to watch them. And that's for two reasons. I get to watch them grow. But if they start to deviate from that, I have their purpose, and I can go back and say, hey, this is what you said. Do you forget your purpose? Because we all do that at times, don't we? Yeah. So... Once you put your past behind you and you determine your purpose, you're now at the starting line. You're ready to begin the race to the more abundant life. But being at the starting line isn't enough, is it? I mean, if I'm at the starting line and everybody's headed towards the finish line that way and I'm looking this way, I'm not going to win the race, am I? So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. After we put our past behind us, after we know our purpose, after we made our minds up that we want this thing that God's going to give us, how do we determine the direction of our lives? Because nothing's going to change until we make up our minds. Nothing's going to change if we dwell on the past and not look towards what could be and should be. Nothing's going to change until we know what our purpose is, and our purpose is not for ourselves, but to glorify God. And once we are that, we start heading in the right direction. See, here, here's what happens to most of us. Most of us, we just sort of go through life any which way. You know, we don't really put any thought into our lives. We just get up and do the same thing day after day and sort of just let life take us wherever we want to go. And, and because we don't have any particular destination, we're sort of like a boat on, on a stream without a rudder or engine. We just go wherever it takes us. And we're going to end up someplace, but you just don't know where you're going to end up. And if we just do whatever comes in our head the next moment and do whatever feels good at this moment and we don't put any thought and any purpose as to where we're headed, we're just going to end up someplace, but we won't know where that place is. And wouldn't it be better to end up at a place on purpose rather than just end up someplace? Because sometimes when you end up someplace, you end up in some places you don't want to be in. Absolutely. And I think most of us know this. I mean, most of us know that... As we, you, you know, the, you know people that are close to the end of their lives, and, and they're not, they never lived a more abundant life. They're at the end of their life, and they don't have enough money to survive day to day. They're at the end of their life, and they become bitter or angry, or, or they, they thought about how they could do things differently, or how they wish things were different. They never had a purpose for their life. They never had a destination for their life, so they just ended up somewhere, but very few of them, if any of them, ever ended up where they would have liked to have been because they never had a plan or a destination. And that's why we need to listen to this because the problem is I talk to people all the time who, who don't, don't have any plan for their life. They just do whatever the next thought that comes into their mind. And you need to know that you don't have to do what the next thought comes into your head tells you you have to do. You have a choice. You can't on purpose decide or choose not to dwell on the past. You can't on purpose decide to live in the direction of God and for His purposes and for His glory. You can't on purpose choose how you're going to glorify God today. And you can't on purpose choose the direction you want your life to go in. You can do that on purpose. You don't have to be a victim of your circumstances. You don't have to let your history dictate your future. You can change on purpose the direction of your life, and you can do that right now, right here, this morning before you leave here. And if you don't decide, if you don't purposely and intentionally go into a particular direction, no matter how good your intentions are, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you believe in God, no matter how much you hope, if you don't decide the direction that you're going to go in, you cannot live the more abundant life. And that is a fact whether you choose to believe it or not. You get to choose the direction 
of your life. You get to choose whether you live the more abundant life or whether you don't live the more abundant life. And I want to tell you something, that should be good news for us. Because there's probably people in here this morning who have been told all their lives, you can't have this life. You were born here, and that's where you're going to end up. You did this, so you can't have this. Or maybe some of us have been telling ourselves that. I'm just the way I am. I can't change. This is the way I am. And that is a lie straight from hell. That's good news because you get to make the decision where you end up, not anybody else. But you have to put into practice what God's Word tells us to apply to our lives. If you learn the Word of God, if you apply its principles to your life, if you take what's in your scriptures, in your Bibles, and apply it to life, if you do that, you will head in the direction of a more abundant life. And no devil and no person can take that away from you. If you do what God tells you to do, if you think the way He tells you to think, if you obey His Word, you will begin to live life and live it more abundant. But here's the problem, it doesn't happen overnight. We live in this instant gratification world. Microwaves and disposable diapers and disposable relationships. It takes work. Little by little, your life will change. And little by little, you'll begin to live this more abundant life that Jesus not only lived for us to have, but he died for us to have. And the good news is it reaches all the way into eternity. If you don't give up when things get tough, and the way we learn not to give up when things get tough is that we have to make up our mind what we want so bad that we're willing to work for it. But most people want to stay where, they at, where they're at. Most people don't want to put in the effort. Most people don't want to put in the time or the discipline. But Proverbs 14.23 says, little by little you will profit much. Little by little a man profit much. Little by little you will gain abundance. You can leave here today and you can think about how bad things are. You can leave here today and think how bad your childhood was, how bad your children are, how bad your marriage is, how bad, how bad, how bad, any kind of number of negative thoughts, the mistakes and the failures you've had, how unfair life is, and woe is me and poor is me, and if you do that, there is nothing anyone can do to help you. You have to decide. The choice is yours. You have to decide to live life and live it more abundantly. The mistakes, the failures we make are behind us. They can't be changed. And I, and I really think the scriptures that show us that we can choose the life we want to live. And one of those scriptures is found in a book of the Bible called Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy was probably written by, most people believe that most of the book anyway, was written by a man named Moses. It's in the, uh, it's the fifth book of your Bible, so it's pretty near the, new, uh, pretty near the front. And we're going to be in chapter 30, and we're going to look at specifically verses 11 through 20. That's verses 11 through 20 in the 30th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And um, if you don't have a Bible, I, I, it's okay. There's some Bibles over here. I, I normally speak, and I'm going to speak today from the New Living Translations. That's what these are. Take one with you. They're free. They're yours. Bring it back each week. Mark in it. Write in it. Take it home. Read over what you learned. Apply it to your life. Um, we care too much about you for you not to get the transforming Word of God into your hands. Please take them. They're free. There's no charge. Amen. Now, while you're looking uh, for Deuteronomy chapter 30, I'm going to give you a little bit of information, a little bit of background what's going on here. The Israelites, they've been wandering around in the desert for about 40 years, and, and they're standing at the banks of the Jordan River. And right across the Jordan River is the promised land that God had told his people hundreds of years uh, before that they could have. God's about to do a new thing in their life. The Israelites are about to go into the more abundant life. They're about to leave the wilderness and go into the promised land. Moses, it, it sort of tells us, it's a review in, in chapter 29 uh, about what's going on in the lives of the Israelites, what had been going on. They've been wandering this desert for about 40 years. They've been in the wilderness, and, and now they're about to go into the promised land. And to give you a little bit of the background, Moses starts out in chapter 29 in verse 1, and he says this. He says, these are the terms of the covenant 
the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites while they were in the land of Moab, in addition to the covenant he had made with them at Mount Sinai. In other words, Moses is reminding everybody of God's terms and agreements that he's made with them, what their responsibilities are and what God's responsibilities are. I heard, I heard somebody tell me, you know what the biggest lie in the United States of America is? I accept these terms and agreements. Click. Because ain't nobody reads them, do it. So Moses, they don't have that little click button. Moses is going to tell them the terms and agreement that they've agreed to and God's agreed to. Because God wants the Israel, He wants His people to have this more abundant life, so Moses has to tell them how to get it. And he starts out by telling them to look in the rearview mirror. You can use your past as a tool, just don't dwell on it. He reminds them of their history. He reminds them of their successes and their failures. He reminds them that they were slaves in Egypt at one time. They were held in bondage. And he reminds them that they had wandered aimlessly in the desert for years. But he also says, I want to remind you that while all that was going on, God was still watching over you. That God was still looking after you. That God had not forgotten about you. And God loved you with an everlasting love. He was there all the time, even if you couldn't see Him. And I want you to know, I, you know, I don't know what kind of wilderness experiences you're having. I don't know what kind of bondage you're in. I don't know what kind of failure you've had. I don't know what you've been through. I don't even know what your successes are. But this is what I do know. I know what God did for the Israelites. He'll do for you. I, I know that He's always been looking after you. I know that He has never left you. I know that He is always watching over you. I know that He loves you with an everlasting love. Amen. Even if you've been wandering aimlessly in the wilderness, God is still with you and He's watching you over you. And it's His desire that you will leave the wilderness and move into the abundant life, move into the promised land, move into the things that He has told you you can have, that you'll get this new thing that Jesus came to give you and that He designed for you to have. Moses summons all the people together. He reminds them of all the things that God has done for them in the past, and he tells them to follow the ways of the covenant so that they may prosper in all the things that they do. He reminds them that they were slaves at one time, just like some of us were slaves to our sin at one time, and that they had wandered aimlessly in the wilderness because they put idols in their lives. They had lived for themselves. They had followed their selfish desires. They had tried to seek their own glory. Their parents had even died in the wilderness because they had continued to live in the past. They had continued to look towards Egypt. They could dwell, the, dwell in the things that they had. Their hearts had turned away from the Lord, and they were serving other gods. They never set the directions of their life into the one true living God. Now, this next part, I don't know if you know anybody like this, okay? It says that they had griped and complained. <laughs> Right. Now, maybe some of us know a person we're so close to that when we get up in the morning and we look in the mirror, they're looking right back at us. <laughs> they had griped and complained about their circumstances. They griped and complained that God had even taken them out of slavery. They were asking to return to the bond of Egypt. And you know why they did that? Because they knew it. They were comfortable because it's what they knew. They knew it was bad for them, but they were comfortable. But this new generation, this new generation has a choice. They can go in the same direction as their parents, or they can go in a brand new direction. And it's up to them. They are about to enter the promised land. And Moses is warning them, if you don't obey God and live as God intended you to live and created you to live, you may live there for a while, but you are by Him. You can't keep the abundant life. You can't keep promised land, but if you'll set the direction of your life towards God and towards His purposes and towards His glory, you will prosper in all that you do. Verse 29, 19, and I, and I, I understand. It, this is one of the verses that had an impact on me. I don't know whether it impacted you or not, but it had an impact on me because maybe I was here one time. It, it, Joe, Moses says, those who hear the warnings of this curse should not congratulate themselves thinking I'm safe even though I am following the desires of my own stubborn heart. This will lead to utter ruin. In other words, just hearing the word of God is not enough. Just knowing that Jesus died for your salvation is not enough. Just 
Hearing it and not applying is not enough. That's not what keeps you safe. It's not information that saves you. It's application that saves you. Information doesn't produce transformation. Application produces transformation. If all you do is come to church on Sunday morning and hear the Word of God and then it'll never apply it to your life, verse 20 says this, the Lord will never pardon such people. And this is strong. It said instead his anger and his jealousy will burn against them. All the curses written in this book will come down on them and the Lord will erase their name from heaven. See, we have to apply the Word of God. We have to obey the Word of God in order to live the more abundant life. Even Jesus' own brother wrote, don't just listen to God's Word. You must do what it says, otherwise you are just fooling yourself. And I know a lot of people that are fooling yourself. Information isn't enough. You must apply what you know to your life. And then Moses ends chapter 29 like this. The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them. I love that. God has some secrets he's never shared with anybody. And we can't be held accountable for those. But he goes on to say this. But we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we, we may obey all the terms of his instructions. We may not be accountable for the things that God has not revealed to us, but we're certainly responsible for the things he did reveal to us. And he's told us, he's revealed to us that we're made in his image. He's told and revealed to us that we are created for His glory and His purposes. And we're responsible for that. Moses is reminding the Israelites, just as I'm reminding you, your past can be used as a tool, but you can't dwell in your past. You can't live in your past. You have to put your past in the past to move into the more abundant life that God desires for you to have. Moses is reminding the Israelites, as I'm trying to remind you, we're responsible for the things that God has told us to do. And he's told us the purpose of our lives is to live for him and his glory. Amen. And in the beginning of chapter 30, verse 2 and 3, Moses begins to tell the Israelites that they have to choose the direction they'll go in. And likewise, I'm trying to tell you the direction that God's word says we must go in. And he just sort of asks them, will you go in your own direction? Or will you go in God's direction? If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, and if you obey with all your heart and with all your soul all the commands I have given you today, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. The Lord your God will have mercy on you and gather you back from the nations where he scattered you to. See, first Moses says, look in the rear view mirror. See the things you've done wrong. See the things you've done right. Use that as a tool, but don't dwell that. You can't stay there. It's not where I want you to be. You have to put your past in the past. You remember your past failures. You remember your past victories. But don't live in the past. Remember the fact you were on bondage. But don't live there. God wants to do a new thing in your life. And even if your life is abundant right now, Jesus said, I came so you can have a more abundant life. And he tells God, you've got to know your purpose. You gotta know why you were created. You weren't created for yourself. You were created for the Creator. You were created to glorify God and fulfill His life and fulfill His purposes. And you have to choose to enter the promised land if you want to get this new thing and live more abundantly. So I'm gonna start in uh, verse 20. I'm sorry, verse 11 of chapter 30. And uh, take a Bible, write some notes, and then go home and apply it to your lives. But the, the verses will be up here on the screen. Moses starts out in verse 11 by saying, This command I am giving you today is not too difficult for you, and it is not beyond your reach. Moses starts out by saying, I want you to live for God. And I want you to live for His purposes. And I want you to live for His glory so you can have this abundant life that God desires for you to have. And it's not too difficult for you. Oh, the narrow road may be hard, but it's not impossible. The narrow road may be difficult, but it's not so difficult. It's not so far beyond your reach that you can't do it. You know, I've heard so many people tell me this Christianity thing is just too hard. I can't do it. I don't want to give this up. I don't want to do that. I don't think I can do it. And God says, no, it's not. 
It may be a little hard, it may be a little difficult, but it's not so difficult you can't achieve it, that you can't handle it. It's not kept in heaven, so distant that you must ask, will you go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear and obey it? It's not kept beyond the sea, so far away that you must ask, who will cross the sea and bring it to us so we can hear it and obey it? God says, you don't have any excuses. It's not above you. And it's not below you. Nobody has to go get it for you. It's right before you. All you have to do is apply it to your life. No, the message is very close at hand. It's on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. God said, I have placed my word and my commands and my purpose in your mouth and on your heart so that you may obey them. And it's not too hard. And we all know this because we have a conscience. And our conscience tells us these things. God has placed it in our minds and in our hearts and on our lips. See, the scripture said the thief came to steal and kill and destroy. And one way the thief does that is by trying to make it too hard to live for God and for his purposes and for glory. Satan likes to cover the hook with the bait. Satan will tell you that it's too hard. He'll tell you, you can't forget the past. It's too fresh. It was too bad. It's, it, you just can't forget it. And then he'll throw your past in your face. He'll tell you it's too hard to live for God and His purpose. I need you to know that it's a lie straight from hell. He'll tell you, your friends will say, I remember him when. Mm -hmm. All right? But if they say, I remember you when, that just means they were there with you. God's words say, I'm commanding you to do is not too difficult. It's right before you. It's not above you. It's not below you. It's right here in your heart. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and keep His commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in His way. If you do this, you will live and multiply. In other words, for multiply, you will become more abundant. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter. I'm telling you. You were made for God and made for His purpose. You were created to walk in His ways and keep His commands. You were made to glorify God. And when you make up your mind to put yourself in the direction of the ways and the will of God, to walk in the way that God has told us and follow His commands, God will bless you and you will begin to live the more abundant life. Moses told him, you've got to forget the former things. You can't change them. They can help you. But what happened yesterday happened yesterday and there's nothing you can do about it, but you can change tomorrow. And then he reminds us we have to know what our purpose is, that we're created by the Creator for the Creator's purposes, to walk in the ways of the Lord and keep to God's commands, God's decrees, and God's regulations. In other words, we have to obey God's law so God will get the glory. And he says if you'll do that, you will be blessed and you'll live more abundantly. But he warns them, and it's a warning for us as well, if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away and serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long, good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. If you live for yourself, if you live for your purposes and your glory, you can't enjoy the promised land. You can't enjoy the abundant life. And he says, you have a decision to make. Today, I have given you a choice. You get to decide between life and death. You get to decide between blessings and curses. And now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you made. you got to ask yourself, what is the direction that I've set my life into? Am I living for the things of this world and my glory, which is only temporary? Or am I living for the things of the next world? Am I living for the things of God? Have I set the direction and the ways of God to glorify Him and His person, His, His purposes, which is eternal? And this is so important. Moses, I'm not going to take a chance with you getting the wrong answer. I am going to tell you what the right answer is. He said, you can make this choice, and here's how you make the choice. You love the Lord your God, obey Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to your life, and if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your, age, your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I'm telling you, this is exciting for me. Because I don't have to wait for somebody else to make the choice. I get to make the choice. I get to decide whether I want the more abundant life or whether I don't want the more abundant life. Jesus said, I have come 
that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. And hundreds of years before Jesus said that, even thousands of years before Jesus said that, Moses said, I am going to give the key to your life. And the key is this. You can make the choice by loving the Lord your God, by obeying Him and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to life. And notice it is not poor. It is not the keys to life. It is the key to life. Love the Lord your God. Obey Him. Commit yourself firmly to Him. Now the word for firmly is unshakable. Commit your way, commit yourself to the Lord in such a way that it's unshakable. Now, now, now this is the important part, and, and, and I know, and I get up here sometimes and while I'm talking my mind strips, so if you've been drifting, I understand that. that. If you're looking at your watch, count sheet, whatever it is, God, that has you distracted, I understand that, but this is the important part. This is the, the whole big idea of today's message. This is what I want you to leave here with today. Is first, number one, don't dwell on the past. Number two, make up your mind to put the, I'm sorry. Number two, know your purpose and know that your purpose was created for God. And number three, set the direction of your life to the glory of God and you will begin to live the more important. But it's hard. The narrow road is difficult. And because it is, most people won't take it. And if they do take it, they give up too soon. It ain't easy, but I promise you this, nothing in life is worthwhile. And this is why this is so important. This is a big idea. If you forget everything else I said today, please don't forget this. Intention does not determine our destination. It is direction, not intention, that determines our destination. Even if we have the best of intentions, if we go in the wrong direction, we will not end up at the right destination. Intention doesn't set the course. Direction determines the destination. Direction, not intention, determines destination. It is your direction, not your intention, that determines your destination. If I decide to take my family to Disneyland in California, and I make all the hotel reservations, and I pack all my clothes, and I intend to give them this great time at Disneyland, and I get on Route 50, and I head east, I head up in Ocean City, Maryland, not Anaheim, California, because Route 50 East takes me to Ocean City. It is direction, not intention, that determines your destination. And we don't have to ask if this abundant life is for us. We don't have to ask that, that this life is for some people, and, but maybe it's not for us because Jesus tells us clearly. I have come that day. By day, he means me and he means you. That they may have life. And all of us, me and you, may have it more abundantly. And we don't have to guess what the key is to having the abundant life because Moses makes it very clear. He tells us what the key to this life is. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and committing yourself firmly to Him. This is the key to life. But we have to choose it. It's handed to us, but we have to reach out and take it. Somebody told me at Christmas time, what good is the present that's left under the tree? God is offering you the key to the more abundant life, but you have to reach out and take it. The door is there, but you have to set your life in the direction of the door and go unlock it. Don't leave the key. Don't leave the door to the, un, the, the, the abundant life locked. God has predestined. He has made the arrangements for you already. He has promised you you can have it. Jesus came to give it to you, but you have to decide to take it. You have to make up your mind to live as you are or to live more abundantly, and by not deciding, you've already made the decision. I heard this story years ago, and it still sticks with me. It's an illustration, and... and, and it's a story about a large group of people. And this large group of people is standing over here. And, and, and right over here is a fence. And on one side of the fence is Jesus. And on the other side of the fence is Satan. And Jesus and Satan begins calling the people. And depending on the direction they go in, they either end up on the side of the fence with Jesus or the side of the fence with Satan. And this happens until there's only one person left. And this one person is just... He, he's decided he's going to sit on the fence. He's not going to make a decision. He can't decide whether to go with Jesus or Satan, so he just climbs up on the fence and sits there. And he's sitting there for a while, and Satan begins to walk back, and Satan is looking around like he's looking for something. 
So the man looks down at him and says, Satan, you looking for something? He goes, oh, no, no, I just found you. Come on, come with me. He goes, no, 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 I don't belong to you and I don't belong to Jesus. I never made my mind up. I just sat here on the fence and didn't do anything about it. And Satan says, yeah, I know, but I own the fence. So therefore, I own you. See, by not making a decision, you've already made a decision. You might intend to live in the promised land. You might intend to live the more abundant life. But until you get tired of talking about it and wishing for it, ain't nothing going to happen. You got to get rid of that wishbone and get some backbone and make up your mind or nothing else is going to happen. And you can make excuses or you can make a choice and it's up to you whichever one you choose. See, the Israelites had stayed in the past because they had this wilderness mindset. They never made up their minds to live for God and for His glory. And no matter how good your intentions are, until you make up your mind the direction of your life it's just going to stay at its end until you make the mind, your mind up to live in the direction that God wants you to live in. Until you decide the direction of life will be for His purposes and His glory. And if you don't make that decision, you're going to stay in the wilderness. You'll never enter into the land that God has promised you. You can have. So ask yourself this morning, and I'm like the Israelites. Am I just wandering around aimlessly in the wilderness? I've been told about this promised land. I've heard about this promised land. I hear people talking about this more abundant life. In fact, I even know a couple of people who look like they're living in the promised land in the more abundant life. But I just can't seem to find it for myself. The good news is you don't have to live in the wilderness anymore. God has already predestined. He's already planned for you to have an abundant life. But until you make up your mind, until you get tired of the way you're living, nothing is going to change. Until you decide you want more, nothing in your life will change. You have to decide. My past won't dictate my future. I'm not going to dwell in a past. I know my purpose, and my purpose is to live for God and His purposes and His glory. And until you decide that, you're going to stay right where you're at in the wilderness and you will not live in the abundant life. And, and let me tell you something, it's not a one-time thing. You have to do it every day. Jesus said, if anybody wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways and take up your cross daily and follow me. It's an everyday thing. We have to make up our minds every day. We can't come here, get all pumped up about a message, and then go home and not do anything, not change anything, not apply God's word to our life, and then just expect to live more abundantly. Every morning, we need to decide, and today, am I going to live for myself and my purposes, or today will I live for God and His purposes? It's my choice. I have the right to decide right now. And Moses says, choose God. Choose life. True prosperity. Colossians 3, 2 says, Set your mind on the things above and not on earthly things. Every morning we have to set our mind on God and His purposes and His glory and not on earthly things. But I'm telling you, the great news is, God's Word also says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be given unto you. You seek God first and you'll be amazed at what He gives you. That's why we were created. Make up your mind to keep living in the wilderness or make up your mind you're going to live the more abundant life. It is your choice. I made up my mind. I don't want to live in despair anymore. I don't want to live depressed anymore. I don't want to live in anxiety anymore. I don't want to live with anger and bitterness and resentment. I made up my mind. I want to live life and I want to live it more abundantly. God wants to do a new thing in your life and in my life. And I'm not going to dwell in the past anymore. I know my purpose. I know the direction of my life. I'm going to quit wishing and I'm going to start intending purposeful things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And we need to get up every morning, look ourselves in the mirror and say, I am so tired of living in the wilderness. I need to look in the mirror every morning and say, I have made up my mind. I am going to have this abundant life that Jesus not only lived to give me, not only came to give me, but died to give me. I want this abundant life. Christ rose. The scripture says, Christ rose as the evidence that the sacrifice was pleasing to God so we can live the resurrected, the more abundant life. 
no matter how much you wish for it, no matter how good your intentions are, until you actually begin to apply these things to your life, you're never going to experience the promise like God has told you you can have. Because the direction, not intention, of it is what determines your destination. And it's easy to say in here, I want it. It's easy to say in here, I need it. It's easy to say in here, I have made up my mind. It's easy to say, I need it and nothing's going to stop me. But I'm telling you, when you get home, the devil's waiting for you. The devil ain't your wife. And the devil ain't your husband. And the devil ain't your kids. They just act like it sometimes. The devil's going to be there. And he's going to say, this is too hard. You're not going to be able to do it. He's going to tell you, this is the way things have always been. This is the way they're always going to be. He's going to tell you that it's been this way forever and you can't change. But Scripture reminds us that He is the Father of lies. And He has come to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they can have life and live it more abundantly. So which one are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the thief? Or are you going to believe Jesus Christ who took off the glory of heaven? Sometimes to me, that's the most amazing thing. He had everything, the glory of heaven. He took it all off and put on the skin of man to come and walk with his people so that we could have this more abundant life. Or are you going to believe the thief who came to steal and destroy? Or are you going to believe the one who lived a perfect, sinless life and then died and rose again so you could live the more abundant life? But you have to decide which one you're going to believe. Nobody can decide it for you. Your mama can't. Your daddy can't. Your children can't. Your best friend can't. Your pastor can't. You get to decide. You choose life and prosperity or you choose death and disaster. It is your choice and nobody can make up your mind for you. How do you know if you're living this more abundant life? You simply look at your life. Does my life look like what God's words say my life should look like? You look at your life and you look at the direction that you're going in it and you say, is my life headed for myself or is my life headed for God? Who's it said in chapter 30, 15? Now listen. Today I'm giving you a choice between life and death, between prosperity and disaster. And in verse 16 he says, For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep His commands, His decrees, and His regulations by walking in His ways. And if you do this, if you, you will live and multiply, in other words, you will live and become more abundant, and the Lord your God will bless you by walking, or will bless you in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And I'm setting before you the same truth this morning. I set before you life and death, prosperity and disaster. Are you going to continue to wander aimlessly in the wilderness? Or are you going to make up your mind to live life and live it more abundantly? This is so important. It's recorded in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. When the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome, he, he spoke the words of Moses. In chapter 10 of the book of Romans, Paul writes, For Moses writes the law's way of making a person right with God requires the obedience to all his commands. He told us in another place that God gave us these laws not because he thought we could follow the laws. He gave us these laws so we could know that we couldn't follow the law. He gave us these laws so we knew we couldn't do it on our own, that we needed Jesus to do it for us. So Paul continues to write. He says, but faith's way of getting it right with God says, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It's on your lips and in your hearts. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by openly declaring your faith that you are saved, as the Scripture tells us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. God says this lesson is so important. I'm going to put it both the Old Testament and the New Testament. And I set before you today the same choice. And I beg you to choose life and prosperity over death and disaster. The choice is yours. And it doesn't matter what's happened in your past. And it doesn't matter what you've done 
in the past. It doesn't matter how bad you've been in the past. You can choose life and you can choose it for eternity. I'm telling you right now, you can't be so bad that God will love you less. But you can't be so good that God will love you more. It doesn't matter what you've done. Don't dwell in the past. Put the past in the past. Know your purpose. You were created by God and for God. You were created by God for His purposes. You were created by God for God's glory. And when you set the direction of your heart, and you set the direction towards those things for your life, you can live life and live it more abundantly here on earth and in the next life. And I know this. And I know this because I know direction not intention determines destination. And no matter how good your intentions are, if you go in the wrong direction, you're going to end up at the wrong destination. If you'd like to make up your mind to follow Jesus, we're going to sing a final song together. And we've got these brand new altars. We, we just ask you, if you'd like, to, to come up and, and pray, or I'll pray with you. We ask you to choose the key to the more abundant life. And you can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying Him, and firmly committing yourself to Him. This is the key to life. Love God. Obey God. Commit yourself to God. Salvation is both close and near. And you think it's too hard? God says it's not too difficult. Oh, it might be a little hard, and it might be a little difficult, but it's not too difficult that you can't do it. It's not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask who will go up to heaven and bring it down so that we can hear it and obey it. And it's not kept beyond the sea so far away that you must ask who will cross the sea to bring it to us so that we can hear and obey. No, the message is very close to hand. It's on your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. And remember, the direction, not intention, determines destination both in this life and in the next life. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart and declaring that you are made right by God and by opening and declaring your faith that you are saved. Moses made a personal appeal to the Israelites. I'm making a personal appeal to you as well. Choose obedience in life over disobedience in death. So... The altars are open if you just want to come up and pray, if you want to come up and give your heart over to the Lord, if you simply want to commune with your Heavenly Father. But ask you now if you will sit down with me as we sing, Just As I Am.